Hello everyone and welcome to the Fusion webinar, Build Your Brand with Instagram. I'm Brianna Stroisley, the Director of Corporate Communications for Fusion and your moderator for today. Thank you again for joining us. So today's webinar with Jen Herman, you're going to learn how to promote your business on Instagram with quality content, connect with your audience by showing your unique personality, increase your exposure with, targeted hash, with a targeted hashtag strategy, and also drive traffic using Instagram's new ad platform. So before I introduce Jen, I have a few housekeeping points to cover with you. First questions, we are going to have a moderated Q&A at the end of this webinar. So feel free to use the chat box in your webinar panel to submit those anytime throughout the webinar. If you want a copy of the slides, those will be posted to our website and also on SlideShare after the webinar today. And we'd love to have you join the conversation and live tweet the webinar, which we'll be doing as well using the hashtag VisionWebinar, one word. So the top Vision Webinar tweeters are going to receive a Vision prize pack in the mail, and we'll be revealing those winners shortly after today's webinar. Um, so we encourage you to participate. And now I'll introduce our speaker. So Jim Herman is a social media consultant, professional speaker, blogger, and of course, Instagram expert. She's been featured in social media examiners, blog posts, and podcasts the Steam Feed blog, and also Mari Smith's Inner Circle. She has won awards for her blog and has spoken at countless events, and she's the founder of Jen's Trends, um, where she offers advice and training on social media management. And with that, I will turn it over to Jen. Welcome. Thank you so much, Brianna, and good afternoon, everyone. For those of you on the East Coast, good morning to those of you hanging out with me on the West Coast. Just wanted to thank all of you for tuning in live. Um, I know that it's summer and you could be off doing probably more fun things than hanging out at the desk learning about Instagram, so I seriously value your time and appreciate you being here. Um, with that being said, we are going to make sure to cover a ton of information today to really make this worth your time. But as we um, just heard from Brianna, you got a little bit about my background. I do want to give you just a little bit more of who I am and, and why I'm here. Uh, first of all, it is Jen with two Ns. Uh, I grew up in the 80s with about 4 million other Jennifers, and we all had to find some way to designate some creativity with our names. And early on, I became Jen with two Ns. So if you're looking for me anywhere, whether it's my website, online, social media, um, it's always Jen with two Ns. So just make sure you get, get that. Um, another thing to point out, um, just for personal reasons to get through this webinar, I am pushing about nine months pregnant, so every now and then I might take a deep breath because the baby tends to get a little bit excited when I get excited talking in a webinar and wants to, you know, jump around a little bit in the belly. So if I take a deep breath, please bear with me and I'll catch my breath and keep on going. That being said, I do talk really fast on my webinars because I want to give you guys as much potential information as possible in the hour, really 45 minutes that we have. Um, together. So take notes as best you can. You, you know, you get the replay, you can listen to the replay. Take screenshots or whatever you need to do as we go through some of this content and material to really make sure that you're getting everything you guys need. So as Brianna mentioned, um, I am a social media blogger. I started my blog in 2013, and I started it because I was looking for a way to help other business owners better understand how to use social media. I love to train. I love to teach. And I figured, what better way to do it than by starting a blog? And to be completely honest, I had no business plan. I had no strategy. I was just like, hey, I'm going to start a blog. Um, and I got started, and I started to figure out what I was doing and, and kind of got organized with it. And during that process, um, an issue that came up was Instagram. And one of the things that you know, I, I'll admit I'm a late adopter. I was one of the, you know, the few people that held out, and I, you know, I was like, who needs another social media platform? You know, really, like we've got Facebook, we've got Twitter, we've got a million things. Where I don't need Instagram. All my friends were on it and asking me to join it, and because of my blog, I figured I really need to figure out this Instagram thing. So I got involved with Instagram and immediately became obsessed. I love Instagram, and you know, that's why I love doing these webinars because it gives me an hour to just talk randomly about Instagram and share that knowledge with you guys. But the more I started to learn to use Instagram, I really wanted to dive into how businesses can use it. And so now on my blog, um, usually every Monday I post a blog post dedicated just to Instagram. So if this is something that you guys really want to learn more about, I invite you to sign up 
uh, from my blog at jenstrends.com, and every Monday you'll get the newsletter that will have an Instagram blog post, and they're all very tutorial style dedicated to business because I want you guys to have success with using Instagram marketing. So as an Instagram expert, um, I, you know, I grew that through my blog. I was on, I've been on countless podcasts. I've written uh, you know, multiple guest blog posts for other companies and, and other major publications. I've been on webinars and I've spoken on major stages including social media marketing world uh, here in San Diego as an Instagram expert. So I hope that you'll get a lot of value out of today. And I hope that you know, we can get through all the information I have and you can get as many notes as possible. So let's go ahead and get started. As Brianna kind of covered at the beginning, the things we're going to go through um, today, oh, I'm ahead of myself a slide. Let me go back. I'm on this slide. Why should you be on Instagram? See, I'm all excited. I just jumped ahead of myself. Why should you be on Instagram? The fastest growing social media platform right now is Instagram. It has grown faster than any other platform, and it continues to grow with over 300 million active users. It's actually bigger than Twitter right now. And speaking of Twitter, I do want to point out that Instagram is not just for the kids. Everyone's always like, oh, Instagram is for you know, the millennials, oh, it's you know, for the kids, my, you know, my high school kids are using Instagram. But here's the thing. The, uh, the demographic of 30 to 64-year-olds is almost identical for Twitter and Instagram, which means it's not just where the kids are. It means everyone's using it. Yes, it tends to be more popular with the younger generation. They're more likely to be using Instagram than Facebook, for example. But that doesn't mean that they're the only ones using it. So your audience, your customers, you know, they're on Instagram. And this is your chance to get in front of them in a different way. Also, Instagram is owned by the world's biggest platform, Facebook. So it's not going away anytime soon. They're investing money in it. They're growing in it. They're, they're expanding it. it is, you know, it's going to be here for a long time, and it's going to continue to evolve. So get on now. Get active. Let's really make this you know, powerful for your business as soon as possible. I also want to point out that Instagram has the best engagement rates on social media. We're talking double-digit uh, percentages better than any other platform, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, anything else. So it is the place to be in terms of engagement. It is a highly, highly involved environment. And along that line, it's great for community development. People on Instagram are active, and they want to be a part of your community. They want to know what's going on in your world. So this is a great place to give a different side of your business and grow that community around your business and your brand. And of course, like I said, I'm obsessed. I mean, I'll be the first person to do it. I'm obsessed with Instagram, but it's just, it's fun. It's a fun platform to use. And that is why so many people are using it and it's becoming more and more popular. So that's all the more reason for you guys to want to be a part of it. So now that I can get it to the slide that I was starting on, <laughs> what you're going to learn today we're really quickly going to go through setting up your Instagram account for success because this isn't paramount. Um, it's kind of you know one on one level, but I want to make sure everyone's on the same page. So we'll talk about setting up your Instagram account. Then we're going to get into the nitty gritty about how to promote your business on Instagram because this is key to success. But then, as I was saying, it's a very community involved environment. So we want to talk about how you can best connect with your audience, and then we're going to go into hashtag strategies which if you don't love hashtags, join the club. I do not love a hashtag, but we're going to talk about why they're so important on Instagram. And then we're going to talk briefly about the Instagram ads that are going to be rolling out here in the near future to everyone because this is going to be groundbreaking, changing for the Instagram platform and how people use Instagram for business. All right. So let's dive into the first, which is setting up your Instagram account for success. Here is five key areas in your bio that you need to have formatted properly and accurately for success on Instagram. First and foremost is your profile photo. Now for those of you that are managing for like a bigger brand or you know, a larger company or something like that, a logo is perfect. That's, that's expected. That's normal. However, if you're a smaller business, a solopreneur, an entrepreneur, something that's more of a kind of a personal brand, something like that, you should be using your photo. You want to connect with people in a humanized way, and having your face out there is a better way to do it than a logo. So it kind of depends on the size of your business, which one you choose. 
but that logo or photo should be the same one that you use on every other platform. There should be symmetry between all of your social media. Instagram is not just a standalone. So if you use this, you know, a certain logo on every other platform, make sure you're using that same one on your Instagram account. This also makes it really easy if people are searching for you that they know they found the right account. The next key thing is going to be your name and your username. These are two different things, but these are super, super important. So I really want you to take notes on this. The username is how you are known on Instagram. For example, you can see at the top of the image, Jens underscore Trent. That is my username. That is how if I like something, comment on something, or post on Instagram, that is how I'm known. So you want this to be brand specific or business specific in a way that people will recognize who you are. The name is what people will see when they go to your bio. So for example, if you look down in my bio that I have on the image, it says Jen Herman, Instagram expert. That whole line is my name. And so I have keywords in there for a reason. Pay attention. The only two searchable criteria on Instagram are your name and your username. You can put as many keywords and information in your bio as you want. They are not searchable. So you want to make sure that your name and your username have the most important criteria that people will be looking for you on Instagram by. So hence me putting Instagram expert in my name. Now if someone's looking for that, my name will show up in an Instagram search. Having just my name, if someone was looking for my name, it would show up, but it wouldn't show up for any keywords. So determine what that keyword is. If you're a software company, if you're a PR company, if you're a consultant, if you're um, a, a retail store, you do jewelry or pet supplies, or you a restaurant, whatever it is, think about that keyword and include that either in your name or your username. The third thing we want to look at is your bio description. And this is something that, you know, there's a million different ways you can do the bio description. You have 150 characters to work with, so it's a decent amount more than a tweet, um, but you want to format it in a way that conveys what you do to your audience, but then it can be stuffy. Instagram is fun. It's a little more relaxed, so have some fun with the personality behind it. Um, you can lay it out as you see on mine where you know, it can be broken down uh, almost in bullet point format and stretched out to take up more space. This is a great way to kind of you know, catch people's eyes. It's not just one long run-on sentence. Um, or if you just want to have you know, a shorter description, you want to have it as more of like a paragraph style sentence style, that's totally fine. It's up to you and your brand and your style. But make sure that description says what you do and who you are and shows a little bit of personality. We want to keep people you know, engaged with our community and, and know what we're providing of value to them. The next thing that is going to be super, super important, and I'm going to dive in on this one for a brief moment as well, is your URL. One of the questions that I get all the time, and you're probably asking yourself right now, is how do I get traffic to my website from Instagram if I can't put links in my post? You can do it from this one link in your bio. I know that sounds crazy. Here's my thing. I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent here. I love that there's only one place you can put an active link on Instagram. It forces us as marketers to be smart and creative, and it encourages us to actually interact with our audience in a more real way than just link dumping like we do on every other platform, like Twitter and Facebook and even Pinterest and Google Plus. All we do is just link drop everywhere else. It doesn't allow for creativity. It doesn't allow for a real conversation with our audience like Instagram does because you can't link drop. You have one link and you have to use it well. So the most important thing is to have something in that link. <laughs> Make sure you, you know, have something. You, tell them you want to send people somewhere. And you can put in a really, you know, you can put in your, you know, your blog post or, uh, or a blog page, a lead generation page. Uh, you can put in anything that you want that link to go to that's going to be best for your business. What I always point out though is that whatever that link is, you want it to be where you want people to go. For example, let's say you are hosting a webinar, like Christian's doing the webinar. They want to put that link to sign up for the webinar 
in their bio. That way people can get right to the sign-up form. This is an example that I always like to use. For the women, and it's funny, you men probably understand it just as well as, as us women, but I'm going to be stereotypical and say, you know, us women, when we go into a store, let's say you walk in and you look at the mannequin and you're like, OMG, I want that outfit. I want the, the shirt, the shoes, the pants, you name it, I want what's on that mannequin. But you can't find anything next to the mannequin that has the outfit you want. The shirt's somewhere up on the third floor. The shoes are, you know, buried somewhere in a clearance section. The pants are nowhere to be found anywhere in the store, and there's no one to help you. It's chaos, and we don't want to do that. When we get people to come to our websites or Instagram, we want it to be super easy and get them exactly where they're going. We're going to talk about calls to action later on in the session today, and this is going to become really clear as to why this is so important. But that link can be changed as often as you want, as often as you need, to whatever you need it to be. So make sure we're using it really well. Total side note, related to this, I recommend using a Bitly link. Without going off on a total technical tangent, Google Analytics does not track mobile traffic from Instagram. If someone clicks on that link in your bio, Google Analytics sees it as direct traffic, not referral, not social. So if you go look at your Google Analytics, it says you have five visits from Instagram this month. And you're like, well, Instagram ain't doing nothing for me. But really, you could be sending hundreds via Instagram. So if you use a Bitly link or other Google shortener or something like that that allows you to track clicks, you can see how much traffic you're actually getting. For example, if I go to my Google Analytics, it shows I have like I think five or six click-throughs um, last time I checked, it was, it was like a week ago. So I had five or six click-throughs from Instagram to my blog post. When I checked the Bitly link, I had over 500. Those are two completely different numbers. So make sure you're paying attention to those analytics and that data that you can provide either to your boss, your manager, to yourself, whoever it is that you're reporting to, and know exactly where that traffic is coming from by using the Bitly, Google Shortener, or other trackable link. Okay. I know I kind of harp on that a little bit, but this is so important. I want you guys to have this information. Finally, the most frustrating thing for so many people is when you have your account set to private. Think of if you had a storefront and all your windows are blocked out and you have a bodyguard standing in front of the door. And every time someone walks by the store, they have to ask permission to get in. And they just sit away, maybe you know, an hour or two later, someone comes back and says, oh yeah, you can come on in the store now. That's not how you want to run your business. You want the windows open. You want the doors open. You want people coming in. You want people seeing what you have for sale, meandering around your store. Setting your account to public means anyone can like your page or your account, and anyone can see your content. People can engage with your content. Set it to public. There are certain situations where private may be an exclusivity factor or something like that that might be beneficial to your brand, but the majority of the time you want that set to public. So now I want to just take a look at two other examples that have set up their bios just for other examples. I know you just stared at mine for a really long time and you're probably tired of looking at my photos. So here's two other ones to look at. We have one from HubSpot and CBRE. HubSpot, most of you probably know about, is a social media related company. And they have a really simple bio, tells, you know, but it shows some personality. Who are they? What they do? Um, you can see from the photos it's very humanized. And then they have a link that goes specifically to a webinar sign up. This is using this uh, URL effectively. The other example is CBRE. They are a commercial real estate company. And again, their bio is simple. Both of these are only two-line bios. But you immediately know what they do and get a value out of it. It's not just, we sell buildings. It, it tells you something. It brings you in. It makes you actually care a little bit about looking more into their account. And of course, you can see they have tons of gorgeous photos. Okay, so that's everything we need to know really up front to get your bio and everything set up on your Instagram account for success. So now that you've got all that set up, we're ready to get started with how to promote your business with quality content because quality is key. I'm going to say this probably, I'm going to say the word quality, I know how many times. Quality is key. So first and foremost, what types of content should you share on Instagram? This is a hard one because people think of Instagram, you think of a photo. Again, we're used to sharing text updates and 
links and videos and photos and a million different types of things on all their platforms, and Instagram can be kind of constraining. So it's kind of hard to figure out what to do, what to share. So first and foremost, your products and services. Obviously, we're all in business. We all need to make a buck. We all have something to sell, whether it's a service that we offer or an actual physical product. You want to highlight these things. You want to showcase these things on Instagram. Not over the top. Don't you know, make every single post about your product or your service, but definitely make time to highlight and showcase these things. Another thing is offers and promotions. If you do you know, certain seasonal promotions or if you have um, bonus offers or uh, you know, discounts or any of those kind of things, promote them on Instagram. Let people know that you have that going on. One thing that works super, super well on Instagram, and I can't say this enough, is behind the scenes. Show the personality. Show the brand. Show the people. Show what's going on you know, that isn't the, the, the kind of storefront mentality. People love to connect with that behind the scenes content and really know how your business is run. And this goes from everything from like huge multi-global, multinational companies all the way down to a tiny entrepreneur. People want to know more than just what we tell them. So behind the scenes are going to always perform really well. And we'll get into some examples of these kinds of things. Tips and tutorials work really, really well. And I highly recommend these. I recommend doing, you know, you can do like a hashtag tip Tuesday or um, Tuesday tutorial or something like that. Answer frequently asked questions, whether it's in a video um, or it could be in a text post. Um, for example, uh, Home Depot does these really well. They do their little six-second buying videos, and they put them on Instagram as well. And they, you know, fix everyday, you know, home improvement questions and all these kind of things in a little short video. These are great ways to provide value to your customer and your audience while still promoting your brand but not being self-promotional. It, it works really well, and people love this kind of content. They eat it up. So if you can do anything, whether it's answering, like I said, those questions. Um, you can make it a graphic, so it's just a simple image, maybe with the tip on there, and you put more information in the caption. It could be a video. Uh, it could be a photo, and then you know, you've got the, the answer to a question beneath that, something like that. These are great ways. Another thing that works really well is greetings or messages. Um, great for seasonal times. Great for motivation. If you've got a company that's built around you know, inspiration and motivation or those kind of things, share motivational messages via video or, or text. Um, if you've got you know, things coming up either in your community or charities or anything like that where you want to include a message of support or encouragement, uh, anything like that, these are great things to share through Instagram. Another thing that works so well on Instagram is contests and giveaways. The reason why is because unlike Facebook, the Instagram rules are pretty much nil. Like you can pretty much do anything you want in terms of a contest on Instagram. There's no restrictions in terms of, you know, the like gating and, and having people have to do this or say that. Or the, it, it's really, really easy to run contests on Instagram. However, I do put the disclaimer out there: make sure you're staying in accordance with any state and federal laws, that you know your legal ramifications of running a contest for your business um, and things like that. There's there's a whole conversation we can get into with contests and giveaways, but in general in terms of the Instagram platform, there are very little restrictions and it allows so much freedom and flexibility to try different things. So finally, when it comes to content to share, we want Instagram exclusive content. If you're sharing your Instagram content to Facebook and to Twitter and everywhere else, it, why would they follow you on Instagram? They, you want them to follow you because you're giving them something about it they can't get elsewhere. So whether it's any of the things we just talked about and the types of content to share, make it exclusive to Instagram. Like let's say for example you're doing your Tuesday tip. You can advertise on Facebook that you have a Tuesday tip available on Instagram. Do the cross promotion to get your Facebook fans over to Instagram, but don't actually share the tip on Facebook. Have them come to Instagram and follow you there. Knowing that this is a regular weekly occurrence, it's a value to them. Okay, moving on to some quality photos. When you are sharing photos on Instagram, it is a highly, highly dominated with photos. It's all about visual content, but photos dominate the stream. And we live in a very saturated world. So you need your photos to stand 
out. They need to catch people's eyes. First and foremost on Instagram, you want this content to be organic or native are the two words you'll hear. And what does this mean? It means they're not studio-based. It means they're not overly staged. I mean, even though they are staged, most of your content is going to be staged, but we don't want it to look overly staged. You want it to look casual and fresh and relaxed. For example, the picture I have on the right-hand side is from a Michael Kors ad. Um, it's either for a watch or the ring she's wearing. But if you're a typical Michael Kors customer, you can imagine yourself at this, you know, sunset dinner party. You've got your glass of champagne. You're hanging out with your girlfriends. It puts you in the scene. This is the kind of content that you want to be sharing to evoke emotion and get that quality reaction from your audience. Another way to stand out from the feed is to use content that is super high quality. We don't want pixelated color or pixelated photos or you know, blended colors and all these kind of things. We want things that stand out, catch our eye. We want high resolution, something from a unique perspective, something that evokes an emotion. For example, again, the image on the right from when Ben and Jerry's um, launched their Scotch 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 ice cream when they did the Anchorman 2 um, movie. Anybody who loves those movies, you see this picture, it's an immediate connection. You are going to stop in your newsfeed when you see this. This means something to you. That is quality content. So think about what matters to your audience and how you can convey that. In terms of videos, I did mention you know, photos dominate Instagram, but videos are – don't ignore videos. If you can do videos, use them. Videos get on average twice the engagement of photos. And they perform so much better in terms of being able to convey your message. The problem is many people just still struggle with video, especially because on Instagram videos can only be 15 seconds. So if you're used to having marketing videos that are 30, 45 seconds long, you can only use 15 of them on Instagram. It makes it hard. But there's still a lot you can put into 15 seconds. You can, if you talk really fast like me, you can cram a lot into 15 seconds. So the other thing I want to point out though when you're using videos is pick a great cover photo for the Instagram feed. I just talked about all the quality photo content that you have to have. Same thing applies to videos. When you upload your video to Instagram, you can actually use the slider and go back and forth across the screen and find the best frame. It doesn't need to be the first frame of the video. Pick the best one because that's what's going to show up in the news or in the feed on Instagram and make people want to stop and watch the video. Again, create fresh Instagram exclusive videos. You can do it right to the Instagram app or create videos that you're uploading specifically to Instagram and only for Instagram. Make it unique, make it exclusive. But you can also repurpose existing video content. If you have that marketing video um, or other content in your arsenals and archives, by all means, upload that to Instagram. You can totally do that. You might need to crop it. You might need to you know, kind of do some editing before you upload it to get it to 15 seconds. But find ways that you can incorporate video. The next thing that's key to quality content is your captions. And I can't stress captions enough. This is so, so important. Such a, a, a big, big portion. People just think Instagram photo. They upload a photo and they walk away. No, you're missing like at least half the battle if you're not putting a quality caption into your photos. So your captions should be descriptive. They should actually say something that describes the photo. You want them not too short, not too long. Not too short means not one word, not Five words. You know, if, you, if you can really say it, if it's, if it's really powerful and you can do it in a couple words, okay, there might be an exception. But in general, you should have at least a paragraph to explain the photo. Not too long means if I generally say if, it, if your photo is at the top of your screen when you're on your mobile device, you scroll all the way up to the top, so now your text is at the top of the screen. If your text goes beyond the bottom of your screen, it's too long. Again, there are exceptions that people are not on Instagram to read a novel. Keep it short, but not too short. Keep it long enough to have a story, but not so long that people have to scroll past your caption to get somewhere. It drives people crazy. And the purpose of the caption is to take the photo or the video story that much further. They should get an immediate story from the photo, but you want to give them that much more in the caption. So here's an example from CBRE. And they give an example, they're talking about you know, this photo is from Warsaw, Poland. 
again, it's gorgeous photo, but they give you kind of some history of the, of the city and what, it, you know, what the city is like and this kind of stuff. It provides additional context and content, which is a great way to connect with your audience. Here's another example from General Electric, and I love this one. It's an, it showcases one of their wind turbines, but the example starts talking about you know, how this specific you know, turbine was created. And it, was, you know, it says, never underestimate the value of arts and crafts. Our latest clean energy innovation started two years ago with a styrofoam ball and a toothpick when scientists were challenged to build da 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 So this is a way of, it's a wind turbine. How exciting can a wind turbine be? I mean, come on. But they've made it, and they've told the story behind it. This is how you make quality captions on Instagram. I mentioned when we were talking about the URL that we want to use calls to action. So let's dive into this really quickly as well. Calls to action should be used regularly, but not excessively. Not every post should have a call to action. For some businesses, you're going to use them more than other businesses. But having a call to action, giving your audience something to do of action is so key. And this is where that URL comes in. So if you're going to use that call to action, here's a couple key points. First, be clear and concise. Your call to action should not be four sentences. That's complicated. Make it simple. Then tell them exactly what to do. Is your call to action to go to your website, to call you, to come into your store, to send an email, to tweet something, whatever it is. Tell them exactly what that call to action is. And finally, that call to action should be of value to them, not to you. If they want to buy something or you want them to buy something, it should be why is buying it of value to them not because you want to make an extra sale. For example, from Amy Porterfield, when she was hosting a webinar for um, her B school, and it just says really simply at the end, link in profile. It's simple. It's clear. You know you go click on her profile. You click on the link. You go right to that page as I talked about at the beginning. Sign up. Problem done. Moving on. Super quick, super easy, and it makes it valuable to her audience. Here's a similar example from when I post, I post every single one of my blog posts to Instagram. And I always give a little bit of a background in terms of what is the blog post about, what's the value to the reader, and then, really clear, click on the link in my bio. Again, clear, concise, tells them exactly what to do, and it makes it valuable because they know they're going to go get the blog post that's of value to them. Another example, and this is from the retail space again, but I love using this example from Nordstrom. So first of all, they have a call to action in their geotag, which we're not getting into geotags today. But up at the top where it says Nordstrom, then you see in blue it says, like it to lower the price. So you already know there's that, that's a call to action. It's telling you to do something. If you read their description, this is pretty much the call to action. It's a little more complicated, but it has to be explanatory so it kind of gets away with it. But the basic idea was, for every 10,000 likes, up to 30,000 likes on this photo, they would take 10% off the price of the boots. And then you could click on the link in their bio to get to the actual sales page. I mean, genius. I'm sorry. I mean, who doesn't want to get a discount on boots and then go buy the boots? It's a genius campaign. So you know, this is from a retail space. There's ways that you can incorporate similar concepts with your calls to action to get your audience engaged and then go ahead and either register, sign up for something, download something, buy something, whatever it is. Call to action are super powerful on Instagram. Okay, I know that was a ton of content. We're still going to crunch through. We've got 10 more minutes to get to the rest of the slides. But if you have any questions or anything on that topic that we just covered, feel free to drop them in the chat box. We will be answering the questions at the end. I know I'm talking really fast, but we still have so much to get through. The next major thing I want to talk about is connecting with your audience on Instagram. This is really important. I talked about that community development, that high levels of engagement. People are super active. You want to take advantage of that. Connect with your brand using, first of all, branded content, something that is relevant to your brand, something that is consistent on a regular basis. They look at your gallery. They look at your photos. It's the same type of content but that it's also recognizable to your audience. You want something that when someone is scrolling through the feed on Instagram, the moment they see that photo, they assume it's yours. 
That's branded content. This can be done by including a logo on the post. It could be through style, aesthetic, design, other factors. I'm going to give you a few examples. We're going to go through them. Most of these are kind of more from the retail space, but give you a really good example of creating branded content. This one's from GoPro. I know it's summertime. We're all sitting at a desk. We could totally like see these pictures and rather be out doing something fun and exciting like all these people in these photos. But we're here learning about Instagram instead. So that's still really fun. So you can see all four of these photos are from the perspective of a GoPro. The GoPro has a very unique perspective on its camera. You recognize it immediately. Also worth pointing out, GoPro does not post any of their own content. Every single photo on the GoPro account is from a customer. It's all user-generated content. But it's all branded. It's all consistent. This is how you connect with your audience. Here's another example from Burberry. Again, branded, it's recognizable. They're known for kind of their vintage, classic style. Look at their photos. They're vintage. They're classic. Whether it's even the photo on the left, which is an actual um, landscape shot from, I believe it was in Paris. The shot over to the right with the two people, and it was actually a movie where they were wearing the Burberry scarf. They still added the filters and the context to put everything in that very vintage, kind of got that muted tone, beige color scheme the Burberry brand is known for. This is something scrolling through your feed, you know it's Burberry. Here's another example from Chobani. Again, all the content looks distinct. It's all different. It's completely different content. But every photo is taken shot from above with food, which of course, I'm coming up on lunchtime and girls getting hungry over <laughs> here. These photos always make me want to run up for a lunch break. But whether it has the logo or the, the Chobani product or not, you start to see these in your feed. You start to recognize them. It's branded content. So find a way that you can make your content stand out one way or another. It could be the way you eat. The angle you always shoot from, the colors you use, the composition, so many factors. But find a way that's unique to your brand that defines your brand style that you can include to brand your content. Another way to connect with your audience is by humanizing your brand. I kind of touched on this a little bit talking you know, about some of the examples earlier on. Showcase your employee. People love to see, we talked about behind the scenes, your employees. Who are the people that make up your company? Here's an example from Hootsuite. Um, you know, bringing your dog to work. I don't know if they get to do it every day or not, but that'd be pretty cool. But again, she's at work, she's got her dog, she's got the laptop, she's in casual clothes. It tells you about the brand. This is humanizing and connecting with your audience in a unique way. We always wonder how you know brands really work. Here's another example from FedEx. If you ever look at the FedEx account, they always have their trucks and their planes and their boats and all the different ways that they communicate and connect through shipping. But here they're actually showcasing one of their employees working on one of their aircraft, keeping everything running smoothly. It's a little bit different steps out of the normal box, but again, humanizes the brand. Another way to showcase your employees, again, an example from HubSpot, showing you know, they're celebrating, they're happy, it shows their passion, the team, their excitement, their energy levels. These are ways, again, that behind the scenes context. You can also showcase your workplaces. This is um, obviously the Sitchin example. They're um, Chicago headquarters. Again, do people work in cubicles, open spaces? Do they have bright vivid colors? Do they have white walls? Do they have, you know, what kind of environment do they work in? If you can showcase this, that behind the scenes, it connects with your audience. Blurb Books is another example that does a really good job of showcasing how they work and what they do. It's a book binding company. I mean, come on, can't be that exciting. But they do Instagram really, really well. And here's an example. So then they said, um, you know, binding books the old school way, and it shows their workspace and what they do. Great example. Intel. I mean, again, a computer chip. How exciting can the world be? But here's an example of them on scene. They're recording a video for Food Network. They're showcasing what they're doing and how they're doing it and why they're doing it. This brings people into your business. You can also showcase your community involvement. This is an example from Lululemon. Um, they do these yoga meetups all over, um, I, I'm assuming North America, but they get all these people together for these big, massive yoga events, and they showcase them and where they are and what they're doing and how people have showed up and all these kind of things. It's an involvement in the community shows your audience that you are that involved in the community and gets them excited to maybe be involved in your next event. This goes for charities or things as well. For example, TSA. 
Who would think? Honestly, TSA kills it on Instagram. No joke. I've been following TSA. I don't even know how long on Instagram. They get it. The things they share work really well. Here's an example where they're helping, um, I don't know if it was a Make-A-Wish or that kind of thing, but some sort of uh, charity event to help this little girl, um, and they posted about it on Instagram. So these are really powerful ways to try to connect with your audience. Furthermore, you want to connect with your audience by telling your story. So beyond just the behind the scenes, tell them things about how your company started, how your company has evolved or how it's evolving, how it's growing, why it's growing, what you have going on. Really fun, hashtag TBT, which is hashtag Throwback Thursday. Super, super popular on Instagram. Take the time to find a couple examples of you know, your business back in the day. And, and tell the story of how you've grown from there or things like that. Incorporate those kind of things into a Throwback Thursday post. These are great. Audiences love this stuff, and it connects with them in a way you can't otherwise do. So here's a couple examples. The example on the left is from HubSpot. This is telling you, you know, if you come work with us, this is what you can expect. We give our employees these little welcome bags, and we're looking to hire. You can register here. It's a behind the scenes, but still from an that they're looking to hire. The example on the right is Starbucks. They're trying new things. They're experimenting with new options. All these are examples, and they showcase these on Instagram. Give their audience some insight. Get things you know, intrigued, excited. They want to be a part of it. Another example that, again, something kind of crazy, Maersk um, shipping. They ship freight containers across the ocean. I mean, really, come on. How exciting can this company be? But they dominate on Instagram. Here's two examples. The one on the left is a Throwback Thursday example. Of, you know, it's an older photo. gives a little insight into how, you know, what the throwback is related to. And then the post on the right, again, it's telling the story about the company and what they do and how they do it. They, if you want an example of, of a company that shouldn't be dominating Instagram because how many times can you show a shipping container on the ocean, they're a great example. Go check them out. Okay, we're getting into the last couple minutes here. I literally am going to run through this stuff really fast. Um, again, if you have questions, dump them in the chat box. We'll try to get to them after the, the session, and I'm going to try to wrap this up in the next couple minutes. Implementing an effective hack. This is good. See, now I'm talking so fast, I can't keep up with myself. Implementing a hashtag strategy. Why do you need hashtags? A, they significantly increase the reach of your post. Hashtags dominate on Instagram, unlike any other platform. They help your target audience find you. This is key. Obviously, with the really big brands, this isn't necessarily as important. But small to mid-sized brands, these hashtags are going to be really important for people to find you on Instagram, get more involved in your community. It also creates a custom hashtag gallery around your content, especially if you're using custom branded hashtags. Like, for example, I use hashtag Jen's Trends and hashtag Learn from Jen. These are hashtags that now have content around them, and it's all my content or content that other people have posted with my hashtags around my brand. Helps people give a broader insight into what I do if they should happen to find the hashtag rather than my bio, or give other examples of user-generated content that can connect with people beyond what you're posting on your own hashtag. How to use hashtags. First and foremost, relevant. It's in capital letters for a reason. Do not go crazy and start using hashtag love or hashtag Kim Kardashian because you want popularity. These do not work. They hurt your brand. They look bad. Don't do it. Relevant means relevant to the content in the post. It means relevant to your industry, relevant to your niche, your business, whatever that is. They should be relevant to what is going on in the post only or in terms of your business. You should use an average of 5 to 10 hashtags per post. The magic number is 11. You'll see the highest engagement with 11 hashtags. So if you can use 11, go for 11. Bigger brands can get away you know, with 2, 3, 4, but you even then should have some form of hashtag in your post. Smaller brands, you're going to want to push that easily to the 5 to 10. To get these, you're going to want to combine popular, moderate popular, less popular, and your custom hashtags. You can do a quick Instagram search. Go to the search little um, magnifying glass icon. Go to hashtags. Start typing in something. So let's say, for example, you wanted to look for social media. You start typing in social media. You'll see social media has like 
millions of posts. That's really popular. You might see something for social media marketing has a few hundred thousand. That's maybe a moderately popular. You might see something for social media marketing agency that has a few hundred posts. Okay, that's a less popular. Those are examples of how you can find popular, moderately, and less popular. Combine them. Why? Because of the longevity in the archives. If there's 3 million posts on a hashtag, in a matter of seconds, you're buried in the archives. It's great for immediate reaction, but not longevity. Moderately popular will last a little bit longer, maybe hours. So people can find your content. Less popular lasts for days and weeks. This way, again, if someone's looking for that specific, highly targeted hashtag, they're going to find your content for a longer period of time. Don't hash jack. This means if something is trending, obviously if you're using the trend like hashtag throwback Thursday, that kind of thing, that's one thing. But if there's something trending, going on with a concert or an event or, or something in the news, don't use that hashtag just to get traffic on your post. It has nothing to do with it. Don't do it. It goes back to being relevant. Again, captions versus comments, I get this all the time. You can put your hashtags in either one. If you put it in the caption, the original uploaded caption, they show for everyone to see. Some people think that looks spammy. Therefore, you can put them, write your caption, send that, upload it, then put your, your hashtags in a follow-up comment. That can work too. There's a lot of reasons to use one or the other that I don't have time to go into, but we can always talk about that either in the questions or another time more one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, finally, Instagram's ad platform. We're going to wrap this up and we're going to have 10 minutes for Q&A. I really want to get to the ads because I know this is important to you guys. Instagram ads are rolling out for everyone. This was the big news recently. I wish I had more information for you on this, but because we are still in the rollout phase, no one really knows exactly how this is going to work. But I did get some information specifically from Facebook on how it's going to work, and I'm going to share that with you briefly. So Instagram ads will no longer be for just the big brands. Up until recently, it was for those big, massive companies that had literally hundreds of thousands of dollars per campaign, and every ad went across the CEO of Instagram's desk. This is not going to be the case anymore. Ad budgets will be much more affordable, and they're going to operate through the Facebook Ads Manager. This is so important to the practicality, the functionality, and the application. If you have a Facebook page for your business and you use the Facebook Ads Manager, you will now have the option to upload an ad, create an upload an ad for Facebook, for Instagram, or for both. You can put the ad on both platforms. Yes. This means there will be an algorithm involved. Yes, it means you will have your strategic targeting for all the functions and functionality that you have on your Facebook ads. You'll have that for Instagram. How this is all going to work, I don't know. I wish I did, but I don't. I just know that this is how it's going to work. So there will be three options. You'll have a photo ad, which is a typical photo that runs through the feed, and it will say sponsored up in the top corner like an ad always does now. Or they could be video ads. This example of the vacation movie is a video ad that's going on right now. Or you will have carousel ads. Video ads can be up to 15 seconds. They will run like videos otherwise in Instagram. The carousel ads, you can have up to four images related to that one ad. So people can scroll left and right. You know it's a carousel ad because it has the four little dots at the bottom. The caption remains the same for all four images or two images, whatever you choose, unlike Facebook, which allows you to put a different caption for each post or each photo. But this is a great way to tell more of a story, get your ads more actionable and involved. Okay, using Instagram ads, really key lesson on this, keep them organic and true to Instagram. We just talked about all the quality content, connecting with your audience and building a community. Do not throw this out the window when it comes to ads. Ads need to still be true to Instagram if you're going to have success. They're going to help you reach new ideal audiences because you can use the Facebook targeting that we just talked about. I don't want you to rely on ads. I don't want you to all of a sudden be like, hey, we can do ads on Instagram and throw everything we just talked about out the window. No, not going to happen. Your primary content should always be the focus, and you're going to mix in ads occasionally to support your uh, strategic plan on Instagram. As we are also going to have clickable action buttons. These are going to be your calls to action like shop now, learn more, sign up, download, whatever it is. There will be an ad runs whole, 
and then on the corner, I think it's like the bottom right corner or something like that on the ad, will have that clickable button which will take them right to where they need to go to perform that action. So it will take them outside of Instagram to the, you know, the, the page or whatever it is to do the sign up or download or, or whatever the action is. This is key because they don't have to navigate away on their own. That button will do everything for them. This is huge. Also, I need to point out users can provide feedback. They can do that now, and they will do it again with new ads. So as a user, that's great. You can provide feedback to Instagram to them ads you do or don't like. But your customers can do the same thing. So if your ads are salesy, smarmy, annoying, flooding their stream, you're going to hear about it, and it's not going to go well for you. So keep all that in mind. Okay, oh my goodness, I am so out of breath. I cannot wait to get to the questions. I know we're cutting close on time. Thank you guys for sticking through all of this. There's always so much more we can talk about, and I do offer um, the opportunity to come talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. You can find me on my blog, as I mentioned at the beginning, at jenstrends.com with a ton of information. Find me on Instagram and Twitter at jens underscore trends. Facebook, which I totally spelled Facebook wrong, but you guys know how to spell Facebook. Facebook.com slash jenstrendsonline, or send me an email, jen at jenstrends.com. I offer consulting services, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one phone calls, strategic plans, Anything that we can do to make your life successful on Instagram, I am here to help you. I even have an Instagram training program that I customize one-on-one -on -one for each of my clients. So if you want more, because there's so much more we can talk about, please reach out to me after this webinar, and we'll get more specific answers and details and support for you guys. Okay, so run it back to the system, girls. Thank you, Jen. That was, that was really great. Um, so before we jump into the Q&A portion uh, in the last remaining minutes, we put up a um, demo request for you to click if you're interested in learning more about Decision Social Edition, which by the way has Instagram uh, integration into the platform. So it allows you to monitor topics, you can like and comment on other people's photos, and also see your account analytics, which is really useful. So if you're interested in having a tool that helps you manage Instagram, please click yes on that box, um, and we'll be in touch to show you how our platform works. Um, so like I said, we've got a ton of questions for you, Jen. Um, everybody, for anybody that we don't get to today, we will put a follow-up blog post on the Cision blog so we answer everybody's questions. Um, so I'll just dive right in for you. Uh, we had a really good one about a company that has diverse stakeholders, um, so really different audiences. Would you recommend that they have one Instagram profile or multiple for each diverse audience? It does depend how much they're connected. Um, this is probably not the right example, but this is a good example for me to explain it. If you're a photographer and you do both wedding photography and landscape photography, it makes sense to have two separate accounts because although they're the same type of business, it's still you doing photography, they're, they're completely different audiences. So someone who's looking for weddings and things like that is not looking to buy your prints of sunsets and beachscapes. So you would want two separate accounts. Um, but then again, there are certain situations where, um, you know, for example, something like a software company that might have different audiences, even though it's all related to the same software hub, you can do all of that through one and you're just targeting different audiences with the different content. Um, and examples of that are, you know, some things, things like, uh, like Microsoft and Intel and some of these companies that do a really good job of highlighting more how their customers use the product rather than what they produce. So without knowing the specifics of the company and the multiple stakeholders and the multiple audiences, I can't give you a specific answer to that. Um, it really does depend on the independent situation and who those audiences are and how closely they're linked. So next we've had a lot of questions come in about hashtagging and if it's a best practice to do it in your caption or immediately following your post in a comment. Okay. So my personal preference, especially with recent changes to hashtags, is to put them in the caption. And the reason why is especially if you're using popular hashtags. So it does look a little more slimy, smarmy, because you're like, you know, you look like kind of hashtag dumping. But if you upload your caption without the hashtags and you put your hashtags in a comment, the hashtags in a comment automatically still post to your, your photo but there's a delay in that process. And those really popular hashtags, 
are the hashtags are now related to the time the photo was uploaded, not when the hashtag was uploaded. This was changed a few months back if you weren't aware of this. You used to be able to refresh hashtags. Now you cannot. If you add hashtags, it does not change where that photo falls in the archive based on the time the photo was uploaded. So that even like on a popular hashtag, that five to ten second delay that it takes you to go put them in the comment and have it populate means your popular hashtags probably aren't actually working for you. So in those situations, I do recommend putting them in the caption um, to get that instant reaction from those popular hashtags. If you want to just maybe put the two or three popular ones in the caption and then put the subsequent less than moderately popular ones in the comment so it doesn't look quite so um, hashtag heavy, that's a great way to kind of split them up. So in the next question is going to vary you know, by brand and company, but in general, what do you recommend for the best frequency for people to post content on Instagram? Here's my thing, and it's, it's again, it, it's not an easy answer, but you should be posting as much as you can consistently without overwhelming your audience. How's that for an answer? So that could mean one time a day. Um, it could mean two times a day, three times a day. I would not post more than three times a day. If you're overwhelming your audience and your feed, they're going to get annoyed. They're not going to follow you. Um, but for some businesses, they don't have enough content to share one time a day. So maybe they can only share twice a week. And that's fine. The biggest thing is consistency. If you can share three posts a week consistently, then make that your goal. If you can share one time a day, make that your goal. You, the biggest thing is you want quality content that's going to provide value to your audience as well as you. And we don't want you just throwing stuff up there just for the sake of throwing it up there just to post something. So find a schedule that works for you that you can manage consistently. Um, okay, so another question for you that came in. What do you suggest um, our brands try to get audiences to start producing uh, branded content for you? Um, contests, giveaways, things like that are a great way to do it. Um, it doesn't even have to be a, a giveaway. You could just say, share your photo with us for a chance to be featured on our Instagram account. Um, you know, invite them, tell them to create content. Um, again, there, you do run into a couple of legal issues that I don't want to get into too much, but you know, if, you're, you, if you're resharing someone's content, you want to make it publicly known that by participating, that, they, that is, they're putting their stuff out there to be shared by you as a brand. Um, but yeah, invite them. You know, say, you know, and, and the great thing is to put like a text overlay or something like that on your photo to capture their attention that says, you know, join us for a chance to be featured on our Instagram account. Like you could even put that as a text on the photo and then in the caption explain and say, we're looking for, you know, the top five photos that demonstrate, um, you know, our product in use. It's, you know, obviously a little bit better promotion than that, but something along those lines that now you've got your audience going out and taking photos of your product in use, you're wearing your clothes, or using you know, your software, or whatever it is. And now you've got that content that you can reshare over and over again. So one last question for you, because we're coming up on the end of the hour. It's a personal one from one of our attendees who would like to know your favorite Instagram filter. <laughs> My favorite Instagram filter? That is a good question. Um, I love lo-fi for a lot of reasons. Um, when it comes to selfie, I either go with Amaro or Rise because it takes away all the wrinkles and the shadows and makes this look flawless. Um, and I recently introduced a couple new ones. I like Juno and I like Lark. Um, those, those are great for um, whether it's like an office space or landscape. They really have good contrast and saturation levels in those. That was a great answer. Thank you, Jen. Um, so <laughs> no problem. So we've come up on the end of the hour. Um, everyone attending or that registered for the webinar, webinar, you'll receive an email tomorrow to receive an on-demand recording of it. So if you missed any tips or tricks, you can check it out there. And like I said, we'll post all the answers to any questions we didn't get to on our blog, so everyone will get answers to their questions. You can find an archive of all of our other webinars at Cision.com. Um, we've got some excellent research there and slides. We also post it to our SlideShare account. That's slideshare.com forward slash vision. And of course, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter. 
So um, just to close it out, we are Cision, a leading provider of public relations and social media software. We recently combined with Focus and also, also represent the Gorkana, PR Web, Help a Reporter Out, and I Contact brand. So Jen, thank you for joining us. For all of our webinar attendees, thank you for logging on today and, and for all the live tweeting. We appreciate it. And everyone have a great day.